A higher cardiorespiratory fitness is one of the biggest predictors of longevity and reduced mortality. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I increased my VO2 max from 53 milliliters per kilogram per minute to 66 milliliters per kilogram per minute. That puts me into the elite category of all age groups. First, what is VO2 max and what does it indicate in the first place? VO2 max refers to the maximal amount of oxygen consumption during physical activity. During exercise, your muscles require oxygen to produce energy. VO VO2 max reflects the body's ability to transport oxygen from the air to the lungs, through the bloodstream and ultimately to the muscles where it's utilized for energy production. A higher VO2 max generally indicates better cardiorespiratory fitness and aerobic endurance. A 2022 study saw the lowest mortality risk at a VO2 max of 49 milliliters per kilogram per minute, with no increase in risk with extremely high cardiorespiratory fitness. The least fit individuals had a four time higher risk of mortality compared to the extremely fit ones. Smoking typically increases your mortality risk by two to three times. So having low cardiorespiratory fitness and being unfit is equally as bad as smoking. It might be even worse. I first measured my VO2 max in August 2023. I got a result of 53 milliliters per kilogram per minute. That already puts me into the lowest risk category. However, for my age group, it wasn't in the elite level. In this study, they outlined the VO2 max standards of different age groups. The graph is in the METs or metabolic equivalents. One MET is equal to 3.5 milliliters per kilogram per minute of VO2 max. So my result of 53 is 15.1 METs, which is in the high category of 29 year olds. It's not bad, but I wanted it to be excellent, which is why I started to train my VO2 max specifically, whereas beforehand I didn't do it that much. I measured my VO2 max again in November and got a result of 66 milliliters per kilogram per minute which is a 13 point increase. That's the equivalent of 18.8 .8 METs, which puts me into the elite category of 18 year olds. Now that's more like it. In a relatively short time, I went from great to excellent. And I think my health and longevity improved tremendously in the process. For reference, Olympic athletes and professional endurance runners have a VO2 max of above 80 milliliters per kilogram per minute. So how did I do it? The simplest answer is I just did more cardio. When I first did a test, I hadn't trained my VO2 max that much and my body was very sensitive to the new training stimulus. Every time you start a new kind of exercise, you'll see rapid progress because it's a new stimulus. If you remember going to the gym for the first time, you saw very fast results within weeks. Every time I went to the gym 10 years ago, I got stronger with every workout. Now, 10 years later, I have to train for months to see a small improvement. The same applies to VO2 max. I started doing more cardio and my VO2 max increased as a result of that. What kind of workouts did I specifically do? I did three zone two cardio workouts per week for 45 to 55 minutes each workout. Zone two is a steady state low intensity heart rate zone between 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. It's low intensity enough that you can maintain nasal breathing and you could theoretically talk. The reason I did a lot of zone 2 cardio is because it lays the foundation to cardiorespiratory fitness. If you have a bad foundation, then the entire building is going to collapse. Yes, you could do only interval training, but the problem with interval training is that if you stop doing the interval training, then your VO2 max is going to decrease substantially. So you have to keep doing the intervals to maintain the higher VO2 max, which itself isn't like a bad thing because you would want to do cardio and interval training for the rest of your life, pretty much. However, having a solid foundation with more zone 2 cardio builds your slow twitch muscle fibers, which is going to maintain your cardiorespiratory fitness for that much longer. I did do interval training as well. The type of interval training varied between how much time I had and how I felt. Sometimes I did a one minute sprint at a maximum effort, followed by one minute of rest and repeated for eight rounds. At other times, I did three to four minute maximum sprints, followed by four minutes of rest and repeated for four rounds. In total, my interval workouts lasted anywhere between 15 to 35 minutes. A 2019 meta-analysis on 53 studies found that short intervals, less than 30 seconds, low volume, less than five minutes, and short term, less than four weeks, are an effective and time efficient way to increase VO2 max. However, they found that to maximize VO2 max adaptations, long intervals over two minutes, high volume over 15 minutes, and more moderate to long term over 4 to 12 weeks was better. So more and longer intervals appears to be better if you want to really maximize your VO2 max training. However, if you don't have time, then the short intervals are also fine. They just don't maximize the adaptations. With age, your VO2 max is inevitably going to decline because of aging. However, you can still keep it in the elite category of your age group. 
Ideally, you'd want to maintain an elite VO2 max that's 10 to 20 years lower than your chronological age. A 2013 study found that octogenarian athletes, athletes in their 80s, had on average a VO2 max of 11 mets, which is 39 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Some of them even had a VO2 max of 50 milliliters per kilogram per minute or 14 mets, which puts them into the elite 50 year old category. That's 30 years younger cardiorespiratory fitness. The untrained octogenarians had an average VO2 max of 20 milliliters per kilogram per minute or 5.7 mets. Having a VO2 max of 5 mets or 17.5 milliliters per kilogram per minute is considered the independence line, below which you're not able to take care of yourself properly due to lacking fitness and you're at increased risk of death. Compare that to the 80 year old athletes who have the VO2 max and cardiorespiratory fitness above average of 20 year olds. There's another 2015 case report of a Norwegian 80 year old man whose VO2 max was comparable to a normal active 35 year old. Staying fit and working on your cardiorespiratory fitness can be one of the most powerful things for your longevity and health. It will certainly transform the way you feel, the way you look and how you function. I'm definitely going to set myself a goal of maintaining an elite level Level of VO2 max for the rest of my life. For example, in my 40s, I aim to have VO2 max of an elite 20 year old, which is possible. And when I'm 80 years old, I intend to have the elite VO2 max of a 40 year old. Have you measured your VO2 max? You can do that at a local sports lab. I got my VO2 max measured in my retreat in India at a longevity clinic. If you want to join me there next time to get many other longevity and fitness tests, then check out the link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.